And so my topic today uh, is titled Reflection on Contemporary Taiwanese Art from the 1980s to 2015. Now, the reason I define contemporary art uh, as beginning uh, in the uh, 1980s because Taiwan went through a period of uh, tumultuous transformation uh, in the society, also uh, the uh, political system uh, in the 1980s. And that culminated in 1987 uh, when the uh, martial law was uh, lifted uh, and Taiwanese society basically uh, changed. Now I came uh, with uh, some kind of uh, credential uh, because I was an uh, artist in Taiwan. Uh, I went to art school in Taiwan. So I know all my friends who participated in this movement uh, during the period. Uh, I myself left Taiwan in 1986 to come to this country to study. So I, I didn't participate in this. And so part of that guilt in me uh, drove me back to Taiwan to study this period, uh, to know what my friends did. And so I, in the past 20 years, I actually worked on two exhibitions. One is the Contemporary Taiwanese Art in the Era of Contention, that was in 2004. And 10 years later, just last year, uh, I did Boundary uh, Contemporary Art from Taiwan. So my knowledge really uh, came from uh, my own involvement in being friends with the, uh, uh, the artists, talking to them through the period. And uh, uh, almost from a non-biased point of view, because I myself is a very traditional person. I don't do contemporary art. Uh, some of my students and my friends uh, joke with me. They say that I'm living in the 12th century. Uh, but I have this uh, non-biased view. I go in and I talk to them. I record what they do. And so what I come up with is, is actually a very interesting uh, report that reflects uh, their view uh, of their time. And I think that's, uh, uh, in a way, uh, more true uh, than the truth. I think different people have different viewpoints, and they want to project their viewpoints. And if you assemble uh, these views together, uh, you get a consensus uh, uh, of uh, the time. And so that's what I have prepared uh, today uh, to report. Now, in the 1980s, uh, it was the uh, beginning uh, of the social and political changes in Taiwan. And that, that's on the social and political front. But in art, there was also uh, major changes in Taiwan, particularly uh, the uh, founding of the uh, Taipei Fine Arts Museum uh, in uh, 1983. That was an important uh, turning point uh, in Taiwanese uh, modern and contemporary contemporary art, because uh, prior to that time, there was no uh, modern museum uh, in Taiwan. Uh, there was only, only traditional art. And so if you were to look at uh, uh, looking for modern art, you probably have to go to galleries, uh, not, not a formal museum uh, like what you have uh, today. And since then, uh, there are two more modern museums, government-run modern museums opened uh, on the island and there are more uh, local museums. And so it's a very vibrant place for uh, modern and contemporary art. Also at around that time, uh, the postmodern uh, influence uh, entered into Taiwan. That had tremendous effect on uh, both the art uh, and, the, uh, and the other things that happened in Taiwan, in, in, in literature, in music, in movies, uh, in social structure, uh, even in the, the way politics uh, changed, all have something to do with uh, postmodernism uh, in Taiwan. And in this period, one of the most important uh, changes is the uh, collapse of the uh, grand narrative, uh, which gave rise to uh, our local identity, uh, what we call localism, or, or Taiwanese consciousness. And then, because of the social and political movements, uh, that led to the uh, ending of martial law uh, in uh, uh, 1987. Uh, and along with that uh, came the uh, post-colonial uh, ideas uh, people uh, haven't been uh, dealing with for uh, so long. Uh, but 
during that time, everything sort of come out, uh, came out to uh, uh, to the surface. And so, uh, in art, uh, it was a very exciting time. Uh, a lot of people, because they learned about these Western theories, uh, they learned about the new uh, Western art uh, technique uh, and the ideas, uh, and they adopted these uh, concepts and ideas and turned into uh, a self-examination uh, of uh, uh, Taiwanese history, uh, Taiwanese society, Taiwanese culture. And so in this period, it's almost like a reinvention of, uh, of Taiwan. Um, and so the kind of art I'm going to show you of this period up until uh, 2000 uh, is this, uh, uh, you can say it's very exciting uh, to see how art is very different from uh, traditional art that we know uh, about Taiwan. Um, so during this time, uh, there's a rethinking of uh, uh, history uh, and uh, uh, try to connect Taiwan uh, with uh, uh, Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, not connect with China. Uh, during that time, uh, the indigenous movement tried to rewrite uh, history. So immediately you see in Taiwanese art, uh, artists begin to look at Taiwan as part of the maritime trade. Uh, and that they trace the uh, Taiwanese history to that time. Uh, so uh, in Yang Maolin's work, uh, he included uh, a Dutch general uh, who went to Taiwan. He also included Ko uh, who uh, ruled Taiwan for a short period of time uh, at the end of the uh, uh, Ming Dynasty and early uh, Qin period. Uh, so they began to look at these as part of the Taiwanese history, uh, and in fact, a major part of Taiwanese history. And so this is a, a new, uh, new uh, uh, frontier uh, in uh, uh, historiography uh, that happened uh, in the uh, uh, in the 19, uh, late nineteen eighties and early. Uh, 1990s uh, in Taiwanese art, and this coincides with the social and political movement uh, that we see uh, uh, happening uh, in Taiwan. Uh, and also at this time, uh, there was a strong sense about establishing Taiwan subjectivity. And what is Taiwan subjectivity? Uh, a lot of people associate Taiwanese culture was Chinese culture because most of the uh, uh, ethnic, uh, the, the biggest ethnic group in Taiwan is Chinese. You know? But uh, uh, to recreate a culture that's different from China, it's basically uh, reinventing the wheel. And so at this time, uh, things being created. Uh, what is uh, Taiwan? Uh, at this time, people believe in Taiwan as a kind of a flashy culture, a lot of neon signs. Uh, a lot of um, uh, what we call the uh, um, fake culture, uh, because uh, in if you go to Taiwan, if you fly over Taiwan, particularly Taipei, you will see that there are a lot of um, metal roofs uh, in Taiwan, uh, and these are cheap materials that people use to build their houses. So people tend to associate Taiwan with this kind of fake culture. If you look at the uh, balustrade. Uh, it looks like bamboo, but it's concrete. And so at, at this time in the 1980s and early 1990s, a lot of uh, people associate this uh, fake culture as authentic Taiwanese culture, the flashy cultures. And this artist, Shai Gong, who used this idea of flashy culture uh, to represent uh, the authentic Taiwanese culture. Uh, this will be uh, what we call the pickup truck uh, uh, strip dancing. People would drive this kind of uh, uh, billboard uh, at night time uh, on the streets uh, to uh, uh, have shows on, on the street corners at the time. So the artist adopted that idea, very specific Taiwanese culture, uh, and take it uh, to the museum uh, as a, a form of uh, contemporary art uh, in Taiwan. Now in content, uh, the artist then combined uh, the uh, uh, a Taiwanese history uh, with contemporary art. The title, Ga Tutu A, Tutu A refers to the uh, uh, 1947, uh, February 28th uh, incident uh, in 1947. Uh, during that time, 
the Taiwanese government prevented the people from selling uh, cigarettes. Uh, and so uh, on the street, there was an old lady who sold cigarettes, uh, and she was arrested, and uh, people protested. Uh, and that uh, end, ended up with a, a very, very vibrant, uh, sorry, violent uh, uh, protest in Taiwan. Uh, and so in this picture, you see uh, here are two uh, secret boxes uh, the artists used uh, to refer to that historical uh, incident. Uh, and there are also a lot of symbolisms that uh, it's hard to see uh, in this image. So basically, uh, during this period in the 1980s and 1990s, a lot of artists will pick up some historical uh, references that had not been uh, dealt with uh, in uh, uh, contemporary, contemporary Taiwanese culture uh, and use that as a subject matter uh, in uh, uh, the discussion uh, of, uh, uh, of history. Now this work is by uh, another uh, artist who uh, was born in 1969. Uh, and uh, during the time he was educated, uh, there were a lot of uh, government slogans. And one of the slogans was that Taiwan was one day going to recover uh, China. Uh, of course that was impossible, but that, that was what the government wanted people to believe. And so Yao Ruizhong uh, decided to uh, make fun of this slogan. Uh, so he, he traveled to China, and then he filmed himself, actually photographed, uh, he traveled with his sister, uh, and the two of them went to major monuments in China. And he, before he went, he uh, learned how to jump in the air and stand uh, in attention. So in, in these photos, you see that he is in the air, uh, and his shadow is basically he's levitating. Uh, and some people thought that this, this is a Photoshop image, but it's not. He's really jumping in the air uh, to show, uh, uh, in each case, uh, a, a, a joke about recovering uh, from China. Standing atten in attention, of course, uh, is associated with uh, military. Uh, and uh, he actually wear a uh, uniform, uh, Taiwanese military uniform, uh, to uh, uh, perform this. And one of the uh, places that he went was actually Hong Kong. Uh, here, uh, he stood in front of the uh, uh, China Bank building uh, and performed uh, his piece. And he joked about how he uh, recovered Hong Kong even before China uh, took over in 1997. Uh, and he went to uh, uh, the uh, uh, Tiananmen Square uh, to take this picture, which has actually the countdown uh, of the uh, uh, Hong Kong takeover uh, in, uh, uh, in 1997. So people begin to think about things that happened in Taiwan, uh, such as the work uh, by Shai Gong uh, in, uh, in previous work that we saw. Uh, and people also made fun of uh, the slogans, uh, because by this time, uh, martial law was no longer in place. Uh, it's a free place people could basically joke, uh, criticize uh, uh, the, uh, the government, the system uh, in Taiwan. And so a lot of these things uh, surfaced. Uh, there are also people who begin to uh, deeply uh, involve themselves in the search of uh, uh, Taiwan's past and how uh, colonialism uh, influenced uh, Taiwan uh, and China. Uh, one of the artists who uh, has been uh, most successful uh, in this kind of endeavor is uh, Chen Jielin, uh, who uh, is very interesting and uh, study hard um, about the uh, uh, colonial influence uh, on China. And so he oftentimes will use uh, Western theories uh, to construct his concept uh, and use that concept to uh, uh, make his pieces. And most of his pieces are actually filmed. It's hard to uh, talk about uh, film without actually uh, showing you something. But I'm going to try to um, uh, give you a sense of what uh, he uh, tried to do, at least in this piece. The piece is called Lin Chi. Anyone knows what Lin Chi is? 
form of torture? It's a form of torture. Uh, it's basically a method of execution. Uh, and the execution method requires the executioner to uh, first drug the uh, prisoner uh, with opium. And then, uh, piece by piece, uh, the uh, executioner slice the person uh, to death. And a skillful executioner can make this process last for close to 40 days. And so this, is, of course, it also performed in public. Okay. So this obviously is, is something that cannot be done you know, anymore. But in the 19th century, this was still done on the streets in China. And Westerners came, uh, it, it was a spectacle, so that they, they took pictures of this, this uh, process. And uh, postcards were then being printed in the West. And so, obviously, the perception of China, Westerners got, is that these are savage people, right? And so this power of uh, image uh, through photograph uh, and the perception of Chinese uh, was being formed by, uh, by a single image. And so the audience tried to explore the idea uh, of the power of image and how the West Use the image to form the perception uh, of the Chinese. Uh, so he actually made a, f a film. Uh, he had actors uh, performing uh, the uh, uh, execution. Uh, we, we, since we don't have the film, I'll just you know end here about this uh, piece. Now there were also uh, artists who uh, uh, look into bigger pictures of uh, how Taiwan. Uh, was affected by Cold War and how the U.S. dominated uh, Taiwan. Uh, Gao Chongli, uh, for example, uh, made a piece called uh, Anti Mei RG. Mei here uh, refers to, uh, you can say, you, you can translate as beautiful or you can translate as America. Uh, and so uh, Anti Mei RG is basically uh, an uh, idea about uh, his, his idea about uh, the U.S. And this piece uh, was uh, made uh, right after the uh, uh, 911 uh, incident, and particularly uh, when uh, um, President uh, George W. Bush uh, made speeches about uh, uh, religion uh, and the war. Uh, and so uh, he uh, made, made the piece. You can see, obviously, uh, even though the, the person supposed to be uh, George W. Bush, uh, uh, looking at a cross, but what he paint is actually uh, the uh, uh, fighter jet, and vice versa, a bomber, uh, but paints the cross. Uh, that's his view uh, of uh, uh, of uh, religion uh, and power and politics. It's a, it's critical uh, of uh, of the West, particularly the United States. I remember when I showed this. Yeah, I remember when I first showed this piece in the States, uh, I had some friends who were Christians uh, who were very uncomfortable with this piece. And uh, for me, I understand why uh, they are uncomfortable, but this is the way the art is presented. So I presented the piece. Now, so the people who look at the bigger picture of how China slash Taiwan was influenced by colonialism. Uh, look at the bigger picture of the U.S. influence, the Western influence. There are also people who, uh, artists who uh, look at Japanese influence on Taiwan. And particularly at this time, uh, the first uh, Taiwanese president uh, uh, was a Taiwanese. Uh, and uh, he was born and educated during the uh, uh, colonial period. So obviously he is more sympathetic with the Japanese government. 
and, and his connection with Japan uh, was strong and still very strong. And so artists began to look into uh, his relationship with Japan and how that affected the, sort of the uh, uh, Japanese and, and Taiwanese uh, relationship. And so this piece uh, by uh, uh, Mei Jin Yan, uh, he has a very uh, uh, strange pronunciation for his name, uh, Mei Jin He, uh, uh, but it's Mei Jin Yan. And the title of this piece uh, is uh, Taiwan loves Japan, Japan loves Taiwan, and talking about this very strange uh, relationship. Uh, for example, uh, in the uh, installation, uh, which included many parts, uh, here what you can see uh, is on the uh, upper image on the right side, uh, a portrait of the president. But in the background of this portrait, he uses uh, uh, a Japanese ukiyo and print. Uh, of Mount Fuji, of course, that's the symbol of uh, of Japan, uh, and then he made a, a top knot uh, for the president that associates with the uh, uh, ancient Japan, Japanese sumo, uh, with this kind of hairdo, and then in front of the the portrait is actually uh, the uh, image of the pres presidential hall in Taiwan, which was actually built during the colonial period, and so this multi layered uh, following uh, of uh, images uh, from uh, Japanese culture and from Taiwan's coast, uh, colonial period made this uh, image very, very interesting. It's sort of layered uh, in its uh, iconography. Uh, and then on the uh, floor uh, are these uh, round tatamis that he uh, had, had made specially uh, for, uh, for this installation. Uh, they look like ancient coins, right? In the center, it's square. And then he stuffed the uh, uh, cavity with rice uh, and bananas. That indicates the kind of money uh, and trade uh, Taiwan had with, uh, uh, with Japan. And then in the background, you see on the, uh, uh, the image on the uh, bottom there, uh, you have a, a basically a Taiwan's flag uh, with the center uh, decorated with Japanese flag. So, this kind of uh, overlapping uh, shows a kind of uh, identity problem uh, in, in the president uh, of Taiwan uh, at this time. Uh, if you pay attention to the news uh, recently, uh, the uh, Fuku, Fuku, uh, Shi, Fukushima uh, power plant uh, um, accident, uh, the food produced around that area, I think five counties uh, from that region was actually shipped to Taiwan. Uh, and sold in Taiwan, uh, and re was only recently discovered. Uh, this just shows the kind of uh, close relationship, the uh, economic relationship uh, Taiwan has uh, with Japan. Now, different artists uh, have different ways of making fun uh, or uh, discuss this uh, uh, Taiwanese identity uh, seriously. Uh, it depends on uh, people's viewpoint, uh, where they uh, stand uh, on the issue. Uh, this artist, Dan uh made a piece uh, called Untitled. There's no title for this piece, but uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, uh, things that you can see uh, in this piece. Uh, for example, on the left side uh, is, is uh, uh, a copy of uh, Japanese folk art uh, in Japanese folk uh, scrolls uh, called Farting Contest. Um, and so you can see that uh, uh, there are these Japanese who are farting, right? Uh, and then uh, this gentleman farted and broke uh, the board. And if you look at that shape of the board, it's, it's actually Taiwan, okay? And then using your imagination, hits here and lands here. Now, these uh, characters, Chinese characters, is actually the uh, translation of uh, Descartes' famous saying, I think, therefore, I am. Okay. So if you put this all together, uh, I, I never actually asked the artist what he really meant uh, by uh, producing this piece. But I think it's very interesting uh, that uh, if you put all these works together at this time, uh, produced by Taiwanese artists, uh, uh, this kind of uh, commentary is actually 
uh, quite uh, quite profound. And so these are all uh, what we call the, the Han Chinese, ethnic Chinese who live in Taiwan, uh, who begin to look at uh, Taiwanese identity, Taiwanese history, uh, Taiwanese culture, uh, Taiwanese relationship with the West and with Japan. Uh, you can look at them uh, from uh, uh, these works, how critical uh, they were uh, during the uh, 1990s. Uh, now, the original people uh, in Taiwan, the Aboriginal people in Taiwan, uh, they were originally all over Taiwan. But when the Han Chinese moved into uh, Taiwan, they were pushed into the mountains. And so later on, uh, the Han Chinese called them mountain people. But uh, they were actually you know, pushed uh, into Taiwan. And there are a few Aboriginal artists who actually, during this period, begin to examine their history uh, from their own point of view. And one of the uh, artists whose name is uh, Wu Wallace, Wallace is actually his Aboriginal name. Uh, before he used Wallace, he uh, had a different name, a Chinese name, because his father is uh, from China, his mother is Aboriginal. Uh, and it took him a long time to uh, re-adapt his, uh, um, his uh, Aboriginal name. And during this time, a lot of Aboriginal people actually did the same thing, uh, to uh, uh, be come out and be proud of being Aboriginal. Uh, like, not like before. Now this particular artist uh, studied photography and uh, went to Rochester, New York, uh, Rochester Institute, Institute of Technology to study photography. And so during the 1980s, he was actually one of the uh, few uh, uh, artists who knew the uh, most, uh, most uh, advanced uh, digital technology uh, at the time. And he went back to Taiwan, began to teach, and also began to uh, uh, produce art. Uh, one of the things that he did was a stealth plane. Uh, he uh, used uh, digital technology uh, to uh, to create art. Uh, what he did was that he took uh, images that was taken uh, in the 19th century by Western anthropologists who would travel in Taiwan taking pictures of uh, uh, of uh, Taiwanese Aboriginal people performing their daily lives. And he use technology to erase the Aboriginal person uh, in the photograph. And so what you see here uh, is actually a spear in the photograph, but the person disappeared. And then he would, uh, through the projector, project the image onto the uh, uh, photograph. About every 15 seconds, you see this Aboriginal person appear and then disappear. Uh, and it's also a very critical comment on how Aboriginal people have been treated in Taiwan by the uh, uh, ethnic Chinese, Han Chinese, uh, on the island, uh, and continue to be this way. Uh, so even during this time, the Han Chinese are trying to form a new cultural history by connecting Taiwan with Southeast Asia using Aboriginal connections with these islands. Uh, they are not. They were only used uh, uh, politically. Uh, they didn't gain any uh, uh, status in Taiwan. So the comment uh, this artist made is actually quite uh, uh, powerful. So almost at this time, almost every single uh, underrepresented uh, uh, group came out uh, to uh, speak about themselves. So Aboriginal people was one group, uh, and uh, feminism or women's group uh, was the other. I began to pay attention to um, women's history. Uh, at this time, uh, they adopted some Western ideas, uh, began to uh, uh, learn about uh, uh, feminism. Uh, for example, they now recognize that uh, uh, history uh, is his story. Uh, and so they began to look at uh, uh, Taiwan uh, in her point of view. Uh, and uh, I brought a few examples today uh, to show. Uh, one of the artists, Hou Su Zi, uh, uh, focused on uh, women's role in the, uh, 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 their con contribution uh, in uh, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan industry. Now, in the, uh, 19, from the 1960s, 70s on, uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, women stay home to take care of their children. Uh, at the same time, uh, they worked uh, for factories. They took uh, materials from the factories uh, and uh, made uh, garments or whatever they do, uh, and then uh, return the material, finished material to the uh, uh, to the factory, uh, and that's how they uh, su supplement uh, their husband's income. But that was never uh, uh, honored or addressed uh, in uh, Taiwanese history. So Ho Su Zi, this artist, uh, interviewed uh, a particular town uh, that was famous for its garment production, uh, interviewed this woman, uh, and asked them about how many pieces they did for uh, per, per day, and then asked how many years, times how many years. Uh, to show that they contributed to the, uh, the, the economy uh, of Taiwan. And so this particular piece has about uh, 30 or 40 photographs, all very small. Uh, but together on the wall, uh, they're quite impressive. And on each uh, of these, on the frame of each photograph is the pieces times uh, years equals how many pieces of uh, uh, garments that they produced. Okay. And uh, the 2-2-A incident I mentioned a moment ago uh, is always uh, projected as uh, uh, the, uh, the ruling party, the KMT party, massacre of Taiwanese people. And most of those uh, massacred were men, uh, not women. And so the story that had not been told was what happened to those uh, widows their lives been ruined as well, and no story was told. And so this artist, uh, Wu Ma Li, who was trained in uh, Germany, uh, made this, to, uh, this uh, piece titled uh, Tombstone uh, Inscriptions. So what she did was, uh, she went to the coast of uh, Jilong in the north uh, eastern part of uh, uh, China, uh, to a beach, uh, no, to, to, to a coast, uh, where a lot of the bodies were dumped uh, uh, after the 228 two, two incident. So he filmed there. Uh, as, um, the film is running, so you can hear the uh, wave and wind uh, in, uh, in this area. Uh, and then on the two sides, uh, he, she would uh, uh, record the sayings of women uh, at that time, uh, how many uh, pieces of clothes they washed. Was that has had blood uh, and things about their lives after uh, the two two eight incident. So it's a very moving uh, piece as you walk into the space. You listen to the sound. If you know the history, you read the lines. Uh, it's actually quite uh, uh, profound. Now, in the nineteen nineties uh, and late nineteen eighties uh, was a time, as I mentioned, of uh, feminism uh, entering into Taiwan, and there are many different ways of expressing that. And this, of course, is one of the ways. And also, this is uh, recording the garment worker was another way. And there was a more direct uh, challenge uh, to uh, uh, the male culture. Uh, and uh, one of the most direct uh, person was uh, uh, Ye Minghui. Uh, Ye Minghui, uh, before I went back to Taiwan to, to visit her, uh, I saw on the our news that she stood on chairs in meetings, shouting and uh, uttered the F word. And uh, I was very eager to interview her. Uh, by the time I went back to Taiwan, she changed. So I never got to see her in that face. By the time I went back to Taiwan, she became a Buddhist. Uh, she was only painting uh, bodhisattvas, Buddhist images, uh, and became very humble. So that side of her, I never saw. Uh, but I borrowed this painting uh, from her, uh, and uh, by that time she was explaining to me this work is actually recording uh, or representing a kind of harmonious relationship between uh, uh, men and women. Um, so that obviously each, each section is a part of a, a human anatomy, uh, make together a very long uh, painting. Now another uh, artist uh, Xie Hongjun um, was quite uh, vocal uh, and uh, uh, quite. Uh, she's small, but she's powerful uh, in her uh, statement about feminism. Uh, 
Uh, for example, the title of this work is uh, Women Are Not Born to Be, uh, But Are Made uh, to Be. Uh, and this work obviously uh, is uh, uh, talking about how uh, women suffer uh, in a uh, uh, men's world. Uh, and uh, she sees this work uh, with a lot of violence. She told me that uh, what she, she paints here is actually the muscle, uh, and it's cold, uh, so therefore it's blue. Uh, um, and one time she took me uh, from her home, which is uh, about 40 minutes south of tai Taipei, uh, back to Taipei, uh, and she had a baseball bat in her car. And I asked her, what's this for? She said, if I run into an accident, I'm going to use this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually quite interesting to, to be with her, uh, to, uh, uh, to understand uh, her mentality. And she also had uh, a new baby, uh, but the new baby lives with the nanny a few houses away. Uh, and uh, I asked her whether she wants to go to see the baby. She said, no, the baby only comes back uh, on weekends. Uh, so I guess that's a new woman. Uh, you know, you express yourself this way in art. Uh, you also live like a new woman. The babies only come home uh, during the weekend, and that's something that I I could not understand. I still don't understand, and I disagree. Uh, but that's just my point of view. But she's a very interesting person. Uh, now, in Taiwan at this time, uh, they, besides women, there were also a lot of uh, underrepresented. Uh, uh, groups. Uh, one of the groups was the uh, old soldiers who came uh, with the uh, KMT uh, government to Taiwan in 1949 and stayed on uh, on the island and couldn't go back to Taiwan. Uh, and during the old days, uh, they were taken care of by the government, uh, and uh, um, they had very good relationship with the government. Um, but then uh, when uh, uh, Jiang Jinghuo passed away, uh, Li Denghui, uh, the Taiwanese who became the president, uh, these soldiers actually wanted to go back to, uh, go back to China uh, to visit, uh, but uh, the government prevented them uh, from go, going back to, uh, to, to China initially. Uh, and and uh, eventually, the government allowed everybody to go. You know, that's what uh, today is. But during that time, uh, the, the relationship between these four soldiers uh, and uh, the government uh, uh, was uh, quite tense. And so what this artist did was uh, he, he painted an old soldier looking at this building. Uh, you might not know what this building is, but it's actually the side view of the presidential hall uh, in Taiwan. So it's, it's this relationship of the old soldier uh, looking at this black, solid uh, building uh, of power. Uh, in Taiwan at the time. And then he used the uh, neon uh, character, the running characters. Uh, and uh, if you read this, the, the, the two uh, sentences, uh, two phrases, uh, they sound like something that uh, Sun Yat-sen has said a uh, long, long time ago. Uh, uh, but uh, he used actually different characters with the same sound, uh, which uh, has very different meaning. Uh, for example, Shi Jie Da Dong uh, describes a utopian world uh, that uh, Sun Ye Shen uh, projected. But the same pronunciation, different characters, uh, means uh, to warn the big boys. Here, the big boys are obviously the soldiers. And then, Tian Xia Wei Gong uh, is, is the, uh, the uh, uh, it basically describes a democratic uh, utopian society. Uh, but here, the Tian Xia Wei Gong, uh, in his rendition, uh, talks about that uh, they are attacked uh, at the time. Uh, so this describes the social uh, condition of these soldiers uh, in Taiwan uh, at the time. And then the title of this piece is called Hesitation. Uh, you can see this uh, tension between the old soldier uh, and the power uh, center uh, in the uh, uh, background. And during this time, also, uh, there were uh, a lot of Taiwanese who had left Taiwan uh, to uh, come to uh, this country. Uh, and so a lot of overseas Taiwanese uh, deal with the identity issue, uh, whether they are uh, Chinese slash Taiwanese American. And in the new society, there was a lot of conflict uh, happening. And so 
uh, Hong Su Zhen, who actually lived in uh, the Bay Area, uh, she, uh, I think, still lives in this area, but uh, she goes back to uh, Taiwan frequently. Uh, she produced this uh, piece uh, called East and West. It's a, a video piece uh, split into two parts. One part speaks in English, the other part speaks in Chinese. Uh, and they happen at the same time. So when you look at it, this piece, it's very confusing. Uh, very confusing. And that, that's her way of addressing herself uh, as an immigrant uh, in this new society. Another artist uh, who uh, lives on the East Coast uh, also deals with uh, um, the issue of, of identity. Uh, this person is uh, uh, CJ Ye, uh, Ye Jin Wei. Uh, and the title of the piece is called When I Was Dreaming. Uh, so what he uses as the base of his work is the, the jet lag, the time difference. Uh, because uh, supposedly when he's sleeping in New York, uh, he should be awake in Taiwan. And so in this overlapping image uh, in the video, uh, you see this uh, a figure actually uh, sleeping. But in the background, it's very busy street scenes uh, in Taipei. Uh, and so this overlapping technique uh, and the side-by-side -side mouth opening with different languages uh, is the way um, artists uh, talk about uh, their identity uh, as being uh, Taiwanese uh, and American uh, at the same time. Uh, people and uh, artists of my generation um, don't usually talk about personal issues. We talk about the great narrative. That's how we were taught in school. We, we, we care more about social issues. We care more about uh, 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 the political issues. Uh, so the works that I've seen so far all reflect that kind of uh, 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 mentality. But during this time, uh, in the 1990s uh, and up to about 2000, there were a few artists who began to uh, focus on themselves, uh, talking about their experience uh, and how that affected uh, uh, their art. Uh, Ho Jimin uh, had an unsuccessful marriage, uh, and he's, he's a very shy person, lives in the countryside. When I visited him, I had to um, drive very far into the mountains to find him uh, and interview him. Uh, he lived in a very old uh, traditional house um, and he, he seldom come out to, uh, uh, to the society. And so at the time, uh, he produced a series of work that was inspired by, uh, in art form, the traditional uh, Chinese prints. But in content, it's all about uh, hatred. Uh, and hatred because he was abandoned by his wife. Uh, and so, uh, uh, if, if you read Chinese, you can see that uh, he, he had a lot to say about uh, his, uh, his personal life and his uh, uh, marriage uh, at this time. And the, the whole series is called uh, Ga Etsu. Uh, quite uh, uh, pathetic. Now, another artist, uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, also at this time came out. Uh, when I interviewed him, uh, he, he's a male, obviously, but he kept on talking about his feminine side uh, in front of his wife. Uh, and uh, so in the end, I decided that I would choose uh, a work by him uh, of self-portrait. Oftentimes he paints himself uh, as, a, as a man, and his, uh, he covers out, covers out his uh, 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 sexual organ by his posture. But then uh, in the tree that he paints, uh, there's always a reference to a female uh, sex organ. Uh, and uh, so it, it's hard to read this. Uh, he never came out to say uh, his uh, identity. Uh, but uh, uh, from talking to him and uh, uh, reading his painting, uh, you know that he wants to say something. Uh, and uh, this is uh, probably one of the most provocative type of uh, work that I've seen uh, in Taiwan uh, about uh, uh, one's uh, uh, sexual uh, tendency uh, at this time. Uh, and uh, he continues to produce works that's related to the interior of sp interior space, the garden, 
uh, or, or the, the fence of area. It's all about uh, something inside uh, that he wants to uh, uh, talk about. Now, in the late 1990s to, the, to 2000, uh, things began to change because digital art began to surface. Uh, at the time, video art was still rare, uh, but uh, um, artists began to explore this idea. Uh, and Hong Donglu was one of the artists who probably was a um, pioneer in this aspect in using uh, popular culture icons in Taiwan uh, to begin to uh, generate uh, art. And also uh, begin to uh, uh, reveal personal ex uh, experience uh, in, uh, in life, uh, in, in their art. Uh, this one uh, is titled Nirvana. Uh, it's actually uh, he told me that the, it was actually an experience after he took drugs uh, had that uh, uh, feeling, sensation uh, and he used that as, a, as the base for creating uh, this uh, uh, video uh, installation uh, basically um, this is a, a, a cartoon figure that runs in the tube um, uh, and that's his, uh, um, his feeling after he uh, uh, took uh, uh, narcotics. Now, around this time in the 1980s, uh, 80s to 2000, a lot of people also ex uh, uh, express themselves in uh, art uh, through uh, uh, religion. Uh, when I say religion, it's sort of an amalgamation of uh, folk art and Buddhist slash Taoist ideas that was mixed together. Uh, uh, you can you can find something about Buddhism, but also time a uh, time about uh, uh, about Taoism uh, and also about folk religion. It's all mixed uh, together. For example, here um, Wu Tianzhang's united uh, in our effort. Uh, depicts two brothers. Uh, one is without legs. The other is without hand. Uh, and so they together uh, uh, they try to ride uh, uh, a bicycle. And the story behind this, of course, is uh, 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 retribution and reincarnation. He made up a story of these brothers uh, in Shanghai. Something happened to them in the previous life uh, that they ended up uh, being born as brothers in this life. But they had to work together uh, to uh, get things done. Uh, and uh, he was actually uh, inspired by uh, new computer technologies uh, at this time in the, the uh, late 1990s and early 2000s, particularly uh, the use of Photoshop. Uh, we erased things uh, uh, very quickly uh, uh, by uh, clicking of the mouse. And so he associated this clicking erase uh, as part of this uh, uh, folk tradition uh, in, uh, in Chinese culture. Uh, supposedly, when a person is reborn, before that moment, you have to drink uh, a kind of soup uh, called Mong Po Tang, uh, the uh, uh, grandmother Mong's soup. Uh, once you drink that soup, uh, you're born and you forget about your previous life. And so some people supposedly didn't drink that, and so they have memories of previous life. And so that moment of drinking that soup uh, is equal uh, the uh, clicking of the mouse to erase things. And so he oftentimes associates these uh, all religious concepts with the, um, with the new technology. And so he began to produce uh, digital images uh, to link the old with the new. Uh, so this is one of the uh, works that he uh, produced. Uh, another artist, Lin Ji, uh, painted a lot of religious uh, figures, but these figures are not really uh, Buddhist uh, religious figures. Uh, he was a child of a butcher uh, and uh, uh, also had a quite unhappy uh, childhood. So for him to look at body parts was, was very common. Uh, it didn't scare him. Uh, so he began to paint these paintings, a set of nine uh, images of uh, 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 very strange uh, human uh, figures uh, with open uh, 
uh, values and, and all sorts of things that you paint uh, for uh, for the series that I uh, uh, used in one of my exhibitions. And he gave the title of Nine Mirrors of the uh, of a Secret uh, Realm. Um, he, for some time, practiced uh, tantric Buddhism, uh, but wasn't very serious. And so I think uh, in this kind of work, it's all a combination of a lot of things. Personal life experience was some kind of religious practice that he uh, was involved in uh, and uh, make these as the basis of, uh, of his art. Now, I think the, the person who um, was most serious about the, uh, Buddhism uh, and uh, used that uh, in his art is uh, Chen Yongxian. Uh, he met a monk, a Buddhist monk, uh, and uh, was influenced by him uh, for a period of time. And uh, during this period of time, he produced some works that was associated with uh, a Buddhist religion, particularly uh, was inspired by uh, this uh, very famous sutra called Hua Sutra. Uh, and uh, this piece uh, installation actually has four uh, small sections. Uh, it's based on his understanding of this sutra uh, and made this piece. And then another artist, uh, Chen Jianbei, uh, originally uh, an abstract painter uh, and painted the uh, images uh, that had gaps. And, and he told me that one time he looked at the gap, there's still something in between that's void and he doesn't understand that space. And sort of the space between life and death, if you believe uh, reincarnation. And so he began to use that idea of in between uh, in his art. And during this time, um, a lot of uh, um, funerals in Taiwan uh, would uh, use uh, a kind of a lotus flower made from uh, uh, paper money that people burn for their ancestors. And so he bought a lot of these flowers uh, to do his installations. Uh, and in this piece, conversation, uh, which uh, has two empty chairs made of bamboo, uh, and in the center is the uh, is the uh, uh, lotus flower, paper lotus flower, uh, and without without the person or without people, uh, the conversation uh, carries on. And uh, Lin Su Min is another artist who uh, actually uh, explored the idea of uh, 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 religion uh, quite extensively. Uh, he told me that uh, his father passed away when he was very young, but the family decided to uh, keep the news from him for some time. So for him, it's always something that unresolved uh, that he thought his father never came back. And so throughout his life, he tried to resolve this issue uh, in him. And so a lot of his art is actually dealing with this idea of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, life uh, in, uh, in a different realm. And so in this particular piece, he uh, used laser technology to layer the images of different images uh, in, uh, in a very, very thin uh, uh, image. Uh, and so if you walk alongside uh, of this image, uh, in different angles you see uh, different people, but it's over, overlaid as one person uh, to show different life, different lives of, of, of a being. Uh, include, even include uh, a dog uh, in this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, work. So you walk ar around the work, you will see uh, the person's history uh, in the past. Uh, of course, if you believe in incarnation uh, and, uh, uh, and obviously this artist try to address that uh, uh, through his uh, uh, work uh, and try to express his uh, longing for his father. So this is up to, uh, up to about 2000. Uh, many, many things happened in Taiwan. Uh, people uh, focus on themselves um, and people also focus on social and political issues. Um, in about 2000, uh, things begin uh, to, uh, to change. Uh, during 2000, uh, it was the year actually the DPP, uh, the Democratic Progressive Party, took over uh, Taiwan uh, as the ruling party for the first time. 
Um, and this lasted until 2008. And during that time, uh, the president was uh, uh, Chen Shui-bian, uh, who actually was quite uh, uh, pro uh, Taiwan independence. But interestingly, I think in art, I begin to see things changing already. Um, and uh, one of the things I discovered in Taiwan was uh, in 2003, uh, an artist, uh, Shai Gong, uh, who uh, produced uh, two books. Uh, one is uh, a, a, is a nationless nation, that's his idea. Uh, and uh, he also produced the constitution of this uh, nationless nation. Uh, but I think it's probably better translated as a stateless state. Uh, so in this well, he actually promotes the idea that uh, uh, we don't have to be attached to a nation. We can be free. We can register um, in, a, in a social and cultural entity and become a member of that entity. Um, and uh, uh, we can move around without boundaries. Uh, so that's a new idea. Uh, today, early in the morning, I actually found uh, in the news, uh, this is a Czech man who have a, a website. He is going to establish a new nation called uh, Liberland. Uh, and over 20,000 people have registered. So you see, in 2003, somebody in Taiwan had this idea. You think it's crazy, but now uh, it's actually happening. Uh, people want, want to get rid of our all ideas of nation state, and we are all being attached to a nation. Uh, we can be free, we can go anywhere we want. Uh, so this is a new concept, uh, but you see that in 2003, somebody in Taiwan had already begun to uh, uh, imagine that. So this new nation supposedly will have their own national flag, uh, and they will have their own official uh, website, uh, and it's about seven square uh, kilometers uh, in size, uh, which has already had 20,000 people uh, registered. That's just a sign note that I discovered early this morning. So, since 2000, a lot of things changed, uh, including the concept of a nation. Uh, and people begin also to examine Taiwan in association uh, with the, uh, uh, the globe. Uh, particularly with uh, the U.S., the Cold War. Uh, and here, uh, Yao Weizhong uh, went to uh, uh, Jinmen, uh, which is an island very close to China. During the uh, Cold War, it was the um, frontier um, um, of uh, Taiwan. Uh, it's across the, the uh, water from Xiamen. And so it's heavily uh, uh, armed uh, island. Uh, but today, uh, is the closest place you can take a boat uh, to China. Um, and uh, the uh, military installation are all abandoned. And so he goes around these military ruins, taking pictures uh, um, as an installation to show how ridiculous it was to have this kind of big build and now totally abandoned. In fact, the government uh, of this uh, county now used the facility as a way of promoting tourism. Uh, you can uh, go to uh, this island, uh, have a tour of the bunkers uh, uh, to s show you how, how deep and long they dug uh, underground. Um, so the artists now uh, examine the frontier uh, of, uh, of Taiwan uh, during Cold War. Uh, and so this signifies a change of a concept of border. Uh, the border could be uh, physical uh, could be uh, imagined, uh, but anyway, this this change because the end of the Cold War uh, and because of globalization uh, was fast uh, in Taiwan. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of uh, Taiwanese men uh, couldn't find wives in Taiwan. Uh, one of the social changes of the feminist uh, movement in Taiwan is that women uh, don't want to marry, uh, at least not to the poor uh, men who. Uh, can make uh, ends meet. And so poor men uh, then had to buy their wives either uh, from China or from uh, Southeast Asia. So that's a big uh, big issue in Taiwan, uh, the uh, foreign bride issues. 
uh, in Taiwan. Um, it's it's now more under control, but for a while uh, it was a big issue in Taiwan. So a lot of artists take up this issue uh, to address this. Now Chen Jian, whose work we've seen before, uh, again examined this idea uh, of uh, boundary, uh, national boundary, uh, through his uh, 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 work on the border of um, the empire. Uh, this this is serious work. This is number one. Now, he was invited to uh, attend a biennial in, uh, uh, in Orlando, uh, and he went to uh, Taiwan AIT, the American Institute in Taiwan, uh, to get a visa. Uh, that was actually the last year uh, a Taiwanese would need a visa to come to the States. So he went to uh, apply for a visa, uh, and uh, the interview officer looked at him and said that, uh, I suspect you're going to stay there. I'm not going to give you the visa. Mm -hmm. So he was denied. And he said, I've been to everywhere. Uh, and I never uh, intend to stay uh, anywhere but Taiwan. Uh, but he couldn't get his visa. So he was uh, actually quite adamant about that experience. So he put up a, 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 a block on, uh, on the web. And ask people to write their own experience um, about the, the application of a visa to the United States. So what he found was that uh, not only people complain about the United States, people also complain about Taiwan. Then he compared the policies of two places. They're literally identical. The ways um, the US interviewed um, Taiwanese and the way Taiwanese interviewed uh, Chinese brides and, and the Southeast Asian uh, brides are almost the same. And so he decided to uh, do a serious work about uh, this issue. And so in this particular work, he included two um, group of uh, women. Uh, one group uh, are the women who were denied visas to come to this country. And the other group were a woman uh, who married to Taiwanese men from China, uh, but would denied entry into Taiwan to be uh, uh, reunited with their family. And so he made this comparison and uh, uh, titled this on the border of the empire, making fun of Taiwan as part of the fringe of the US empire, doing almost exactly the same thing. Now, foreign bright issue, uh, as I mentioned, was uh, uh, very, uh, very important in Taiwan uh, since 2000. Uh, it's still a very important issue, but much uh, better controlled this day. So, uh, Hao Su Zhi, who uh, examined the uh, labor, woman labor issue, uh, spent some time interviewing these uh, uh, foreign brides, particularly in southern Taiwan, the rural areas where these uh, uh, women live. Uh, <coughs> and uh, he, she uh, interviewed them uh, and she documents their stories and then produced these uh, uh, dual uh, sets of, of uh, uh, pictures uh, talk about their lives. Usually one set, one, one image is color uh, without uh, characters. The other is the uh, 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 monotone uh, image uh, with the uh, text uh, that she uh, uh, interviewed. Uh, and, and basically the history uh, of this bride uh, in Taiwan. Uh, and there are common stories that you can, you can find in these stories about abuse, uh, 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 mistreatment uh, of uh, these foreign brides in Taiwan. Uh, and so she produced a huge set uh, of, uh, uh, of um, uh, this topic. And I, I uh, interviewed uh, her uh, and uh, selected a few uh, works for uh, an exhibition that I worked on. Uh, Yu Zhenda is a younger artist who uh, uh, oftentimes would uh, uh, make fun, uh, like his friend uh, Yao Ruizhen, of the old slogans or old uh, concept about uh, uh, national identity. Now, in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, there was a very famous song called Odes uh, to the Republic of China, 
but th it is a song that imagines China, uh, Im imagines that Taiwan owns China. So in the song, it talks about the national border, uh, as big as even bigger than the uh, contemporary China, including Mongolia. Uh, and so uh, when he uh, was an artist uh, resident uh, in uh, New York, he would find street people uh, and then gave them uh, a sentence from this uh, song and ask them to sing. Obviously, this meant nothing to the uh, uh, to the person, uh, but he assembled uh, their singing uh, together uh, uh, to make a video. Uh, I don't have the piece with me, but it's very very funny uh, when you look at uh, uh, the piece. So basically, it's it's talking about uh, a boundary that was not there uh, and. Uh, uh, and invited people who have no idea what they're singing uh, and uh, combine them together uh, to, to people who know uh, this song uh, during that time. It's actually uh, quite uh, uh, entertaining. Now, globalization had a tremendous effect on uh, Taiwan. You can see uh, the boundary changes. Uh, foreigners move into Taiwan. Uh, Taiwanese actually uh, going out of uh, Taiwan to uh, to different places. Uh, that creates a sort of a, a new understanding of uh, cultural identity. Uh, people are no longer fixing it on the idea of Taiwanese identity. In fact, the, in fact, the younger generation uh, of Taiwanese are quite uh, global, uh, are very different from uh, the older generation. And so that mixture culture with new, newly invented culture gave rise to a, a new imagination of a kind of uh, uh, quasi identity, uh, and this I think can be represented by uh, uh, Tu Wei Zheng's production of the uh, uh, Punan culture. Uh, this was a work that he produced uh, for a long period of time, uh, from 2000 to 2008. And recently, he told me that he uh, went back to this topic and began to visit it again. Uh, and I think it's very interesting uh, that he uh, first created this work. Uh, as an ancient culture, uh, called Punan culture. Of course, this is a made-up culture. Then he buried this entire civilization on the ground, covered it up, uh, and then he uh, hired people to excavate uh, this uh, uh, this culture, and had uh, uh, worked with uh, scholars in uh, Academia Seneca, like Smithsonian in this country, to talk about this culture as a new discovery, very important discovery. Uh, in uh, in Taiwan, and this got the TV stations involved in reporting this as a real news, real discovery, and so something original was art um, got the attention of uh, local politicians who want to be involved in in uh, 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 in the opening uh, of the show uh, of this new culture, uh, but these these politicians obviously had no idea that this was just holding with a performance. Uh, but what you see here is a, it, it's a section of the uh, um, work. Uh, it looks like a Mayan culture. Uh, it looks like uh, something familiar to you. Uh, but uh, when you look closely, a lot of these parts are actually completed parts. Okay. Uh, so um, it's a culture of past and present, all mixed uh, together. Uh, and uh, I think it really represents a, a new culture uh, in Taiwan, a kind of new identity uh, in Taiwan uh, uh, that uh, uh, as, as a result of uh, globalization uh, that you see uh, happening among the uh, uh, younger artists. Now in, uh, in Taiwan, because of the uh, uh, search for identity uh, for quite a long time, probably from 1970s on, uh, people began to pay attention to this uh, local identity. Uh, and uh, in the late 1980s to 1990s, that became sort of a political movement. Uh, and that gave rise to a, a kind of market that, that uh, uh, support uh, something that represents Taiwan. And I think one of the things that represents Taiwan well is the landscape. Uh, of Taiwan. And so people who paint realistic landscape in Taiwan actually uh, are doing pretty well uh, because of them, them, there's a good market there. 
Uh, and uh, I will introduce you to a few artists. Uh, actually, the, the, the story behind these artists is uh, uh, interesting. Uh, Huang Minchang is an, uh, a, a very, very fine artist uh, who paint very realistic rice fields. Uh, well, after he graduated from art school, he went to Paris uh, to study oil and, and study. Uh, uh, and then when he back, went back to Taiwan, he actually bought an apartment uh, in the rural area uh, of Taiwan. That you can look at the rice field uh, for miles. And so, so he thought that was his heaven, that he was going to paint uh, uh, rice field forever from that vantage point. But because of the urban sprawl, um, you know, that rice field was cut up and built uh, over. Uh, even today, uh, uh, if you go to his apartment, you can almost touch the building uh, right next to him. So there was no rice field uh, to view anymore. Uh, and also the loss of the uh, uh, farmland in Taiwan is a serious issue. So for years, uh, he had been actually um, going to uh, Southeast Asia, to Vietnam and to Bali, to paint rice field. Um, so obviously, his landscape of rice field is no longer Taiwan. But in Taiwan, uh, when people look at rice field, uh, people and collectors still associate the rice field with, with Taiwan. So I, I guess the, the message is that uh, uh, the object itself or the painting itself uh, is a story, but the receiver, the audience, imagination is another. Uh, and that imagine, imagination or longing for kind of a, uh, identity, land identity, uh, drive collectors to, uh, to like this kind of work, uh, in addition to its artistic culture, uh, this artistic value, uh, and want to own this type of thing. Uh, another artist, uh, Ye Zizhi, who uh, also paints uh, mostly Taiwan landscape. Uh, he actually lived in New York City for 19 and a half years uh, as a uh, surrealist uh, 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 painter. Uh, and uh, he couldn't make ends meet. So he just decided to go back to Taiwan um, and uh, focus on uh, 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 Taiwanese uh, landscape. Uh, and, and very realistic. He often has combined oil painting with gouache. Uh, and if you look at his work, um, they reflect a kind of uh, Taiwan uh, sentiment, particularly the, the uh, uh, type of uh, trees that he paints, the light that he paints. It's all very local. Uh, you have to be there to understand. Uh, even you can tell the season uh, of his work. Uh, and for people uh, in Taiwan, this, is, uh, uh, this kind of work resonates a lot. And so, uh, uh, he's doing pretty well uh, in Taiwan uh, today, um, and often his work uh, is very personal. He often writes a story about uh, the work that he paints. Uh, for example, this is the one that he uh, he painted from uh, the window of his friend's house, uh, and it was the time when he went back to uh, Taiwan for his father's funeral, uh, and he stayed with uh, his friend, and through the window, uh, he painted this uh, 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 forest of Xiangsi, uh, Xiangsi Su Acacia. Now, Xiangsi is, is, is a term in Chinese uh, refer refers to thinking about somebody. And so you can see how he used the, the, uh, the tree uh, to, uh, to remember uh, his father uh, when he went back to, to Taiwan. That's how he oftentimes will associate his painting with uh, a particular personal story uh, in uh, uh, in this work. Now another artist, uh, Lin Xinyuan, uh, uh, is uh, one of the oldest uh, uh, painter in Taiwan. He is now suffering a uh, Parkinson's disease, so so he uh, probably is going to start painting uh, pretty soon. Now he uh, grew up during the colonial period. Was born and grew up. During the colonial period, so like the uh, uh, former president uh, of Taiwan, he had a strong uh, association or fondness of uh, uh, Japanese rule uh, of Taiwan, and he oftentimes associated Taiwan with a kind of tropical heaven, 
um, whose vibrant colors, and that's his imagination of Taiwan escape. In fact, this idea of Taiwan as tropical and vibrant colors is actually a Japanese invention because in Japan it's colder, darker in the winter. So they imagine their their colony Taiwan as a as a tropical heaven. Uh, so they promote that idea uh, in Japan and also uh, in Taiwan. In fact, in Taiwan, they wanted Taiwanese to paint this local color, uh, the tropical heaven. Uh, and so one time I saw uh, uh, Lin Xinye's work uh, and the photo that he uh, painted. Uh, the two were very different. The painting has a lot of colors that's not in the photos. It's almost like somebody used the Photoshop to create a different image, very colorful image of the photo, original photo, uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the painting. And so, for me, uh, Lin Xinye represents this generation of artists who still imagined a landscape based on an old colonial concept uh, of Taiwan. If you compare Lin Xinye's landscape with uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, Ye Ziqi's landscape, they're very different. But they both are Taiwan, uh, and obviously uh, any place uh, has cloudy days, rainy days, sunny days. So the idea of tropical local with a lot of vibrant colors is just a fixed imagination. Uh, it never represents the the uh, truth from moment to moment. But that's how uh, Lin Xinye uh, imagines uh, what Taiwanese culture uh, should be. Or Taiwanese landscape. So this is a, a continuing, ongoing uh, aspect of Taiwanese art uh, that's still grounded in the local. But most of the other things are going global. Uh, uh, for example, uh, artists have begun to pay attention to environmental issues. Uh, this is the artist Vincent Huang, uh, who uh, was educated in England, uh, and he had done a lot of. Uh, environmental or what he calls the eco art uh, around the globe and one of the things that he did uh, last year was uh, he uh, that he created a polar bear hamburger uh, um, in the United States this is just a conceptual uh, photograph that he uh, <coughs> made for me but uh, in reality he created this stuffed animal uh, uh, polar bear uh, and uh, the bonds uh, that he created uh, and this piece toward uh, the uh, United States. Um, now, the the idea of using polar bear, uh, as many of you know, that polar bear is actually in trouble because of global warming. Uh, so this is a, a very uh, powerful uh, symbol. And uh, the uh, the uh, uh, hamburger idea uh, comes from. Uh, 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 these hamburger companies, they have huge uh, pastures uh, in uh, Central America uh, that destroy the rainforest um, uh, for their cattle uh, grazing and for the meat uh, for the hamburger. So there's a direct relationship between their operation and uh, contribution to uh, global warming and the fate of uh, uh, polar bear. Uh, so he discussed with me about the concept of work, uh, of the work, uh, and so we came up with this uh, uh, this uh, inner relationship uh, in a global warming, uh, and in the end create uh, this work. So global warming was not only a, a global uh, issue, but also a local issue. Uh, for example, during the time of uh, uh, industrialization, uh, Taiwan suffered a lot. Uh, Taiwanese landscapes have uh, suffered a lot, uh, and so uh, the artist Wu, Wu Zhengzhang took photos of these uh, uh, industrial sites. He was actually a photographer for a chemical company to document the uh, uh, building of um, factories. Uh, in fact, the, the factory uh, in the background, uh, he took a lot of photos when it was built, uh, was uh, put up, uh, and he left the company. Ten years later, he came back to visit uh, the site. Uh, and uh, here is actually, in the front, the foreground is actually an oyster farm. And he told me that uh, he used to eat oyster from this area. Uh, and now, as you can see, nothing 
uh, can survive uh, in this area. It's all uh, polluted. And so, as we know, uh, almost everywhere, everywhere on Earth, this is a common problem. Um, and so, uh, it's a local, but it's also global uh, uh, phenomenon. And so, uh, in Taiwan, artists begin to uh, pay attention to uh, this kind of uh, issue that uh, has a direct impact on human survival. Now, another thing I, I, I find interesting in Taiwan is that uh, uh, people begin to see how uh, technology uh, can help us connect uh, not only with with uh, uh, each other, but also uh, with uh, with uh, our environment. Um, and uh, I found, uh, for example, uh, Lin Shu Min's work, uh, Stream. Uh, this was actually created uh, in, uh, <coughs> first in uh, 2008, and then in 2014, he created another version for me, uh, which is horizontal. Uh, and uh, this is using the text image, uh, text, texting technology that you can text uh, to his website and then it will appear uh, uh, in the installation as a, a waterfall. Uh, actually quite beautiful. Uh, so you can see a lot of people are doing that uh, on site. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, characters come down uh, like waterfall uh, uh, in the uh, installation. And this is a way of showing the uh, connectability uh, of uh, of mankind at this time, but he also addressed the issue of uh, the current of uh, of the signals. Actually, it's all around us, and uh, we're all connected uh, in that sense as well. Uh, we just don't uh, don't know, uh, except that sometimes you get warning of not to have your phone too close to you. Uh, uh, potentially have a uh, 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 ear setting effect. Uh, now another artist, uh, Huang Xinjian also used a uh, uh, very uh, advanced uh, technology to do uh, uh, interactive work uh, to show the connection uh, between people and their surroundings. And this work is titled uh, Xiao Wei Dan Shanghai, uh, which was actually produced in 2008 for the uh, Shanghai Biennial uh, of that year. And this one, uh, in the installation, uh, the building will move with you. And so the building becomes a person uh, that you see here when, when the artist raises his hand, uh, the building uh, also uh, does the same thing. And then the, the uh, building walks as the artist walks. And so this, is, this kind of interactive work, uh, as the artist told me, uh, was trying to uh, uh, show a kind of a connection of a human culture uh, in our uh, built environment. Uh, in fact, he uh, talked about uh, walking in old Shanghai, see these old buildings with uh, bamboo stick hanging out and the laundry hanging out. You, you can almost count how many people live in this house and the ages uh, and their fashion statement. And so just by walking on the street, you can learn so much about culture. So the, the building itself is not a cold, uh, hard uh, building, uh, but it's something that you can learn about uh, the uh, humanity uh, and uh, the, the people, uh, the culture uh, in this uh, environment. Um, so uh, he is actually a pretty, pretty interesting artist and used a lot of uh, uh, most uh, uh, advanced technology. He oftentimes also adopt some uh, military technologies of uh, interactive uh, uh, technology uh, in his artwork, uh, in his newer artwork. So uh, this is a way of uh, artists addressing uh, global uh, environment and global connectability. Now there's a group of artists, I think younger artists, that I find in Taiwan today uh, that begin to uh, talk about art, uh, talk about art from the personal point of view. Uh, it's all about themselves uh, and uh, revealing uh, their inner self uh, through art. Uh, and sometimes uh, these inner self has some common uh, uh, ground with other people. Some are very private. Uh, works that I find very interesting. This is a new trend, and particularly uh, among artists of about 30, uh, 35 or younger uh, artists who, uh, uh, who are not very interested in uh, the big issues that my generation are interested in. Uh, and so uh, uh, I find this is sort of a new trend um, that's going to uh, 
uh, become the uh, mainstream in, uh, in Taiwan and perhaps uh, somewhere else as well. Uh, here uh, is a work by uh, uh, Tai Obao. Um, uh, it's titled Black Red, it's rather dark. Uh, and this derived from his personal uh, experience as an art student uh, when he would uh, receive commissions uh, from uh, companies and organizations. And after he had done his work, uh, he often didn't get paid. And people told him, you're lucky that we give you the experience. Uh, and so uh, he was quite adamant about that. And so uh, as soon as he graduated, he formed a company. He designed a contract, uh, invited lawyers to write his contract. So now you do business with him, it's business. Uh, and you sign the contract. There's a legal binding uh, in everything that you do with him. Uh, and so because of that experience, he uh, has a, a side of him that wants to reveal this kind of uh, social injustice uh, and uh, personal freedom uh, being sacrificed uh, in, uh, in this kind of system. So in this work, uh, Dark Rain, he, uh, he depicts uh, multiple identical people uh, in uh, uh, in the uh, in, in office, who is cooking the mouse? This is sort of what we do every day, routinely, uh, doing our own work. Uh, and this big system uh, is uh, controlling everybody. And so one of this, these people got tired of this and wanted to get out of the system, uh, could not get out. So he thought that if I cut off my finger, right, uh, and if I cut off my tongue, I can't speak, I can't work, I can't click the mouse anymore. Then you can you have to let me go because I'm useless. So part of the film shows, uh, for example, here he's uh, trying to chop off his tongue. Uh, here is cutting off the finger, uh, and this is all done by a uh, hand pen animation. And so once he he done that, uh, this person is classified as crazy, and he didn't understand know that uh, actually there's a category uh, as craziness in our society will put you in an institution. So he was sent to an institution, you realize there are hundreds of them like him in the institution. So what he's trying to say is that no matter what you do, the system's here, you can't get away from it. Uh, just like we all have to pay tax right? uh, every year uh, and after you die, uh, you also have to pay tax. Uh, so this is the big system uh, that he's trying to talk, uh, 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 talk about in this particular world. And I think it has something to do with his, his own experience as a student. Uh, another artist, uh, Chiu Zhao Cai, a uh, very young artist, still in his late 20s. Uh, he has not been very successful as an artist, uh, still struggling very hard. And so uh, he's very tired. And so he created this uh, series called uh, The World of Fatigue. Uh, but he doesn't really talk about himself. He actually uh, used a lot of uh, political figures. Uh, in here, this series, one is Chiang Kai-shek, the other is Mao Zedong, uh, Chairman Mao. Of course, these two leaders fought all their lives. And the history of Taiwan and China of the past half century basically was created by these two figures. Okay, so at some point, they're tired. So, and he also made some weapons like uh, missiles bending uh, because the missiles are tired. Okay. So that's his way of showing uh, how tired he is uh, without saying uh, that's himself. Um, and remember uh, in the uh, uh, early 2000s, there was an artist who uh, did the uh, video installation of uh, Nirvana, uh, his personal uh, uh, experience with narcotics. Uh, in 2010, another artist, uh, Su Huiyu, uh, who uh, actually suffers uh, from insomnia, so he had to take a kind of drug uh, called uh, steel knots. And uh, according to him, uh, this uh, medicine makes him go into a sort of a hyper real state that's sort of in between sleeping and not sleeping, between real and fiction. And so all sorts of things that come uh, after he uh, takes the medicine. He said he doesn't take it all the time, but if there's an important event next day, he needs sleep, 
uh, he'll take it. And one time after he took it, all kinds of wild things happened uh, in his uh, uh, in his life that he 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 started to see things, uh, experience things. And so based on that, he created the. Uh, this particular work, uh, and in the front, him uh, dress, uh, dress in the dress uh, that happened uh, after he took the uh, medicine uh, uh, that he imagined himself. And all sorts of ancient and, and, and the modern uh, figures appeared uh, in the same space. And he used the uh, dry ice to create this this effect uh, of that dreamland. Uh, that he experienced. So this again is sort of a very personal, but made very public. Uh, uh, and in fact, in the uh, um, uh, opening of uh, an exhibition of this work, he uh, supposedly provided uh, the steel knocks, uh, but it's a prescription uh, medicine. And so the police got involved in trying to stop this performance, because he want people to experience what he experienced. Um, uh, feminism sort of continues on, um, but it's not as hardcore as what you see uh, you seen in the uh, 1980s and early 1990s. Uh, the new generation of female artists uh, tend to be uh, more subtle, um, have their opinions, but oftentimes they regard themselves as a, a woman artist, or uh, they artists but happen to be women. You know? and, and oftentimes they address their issues uh, in different ways. For example, uh, Xu Yuehui, uh, who was actually educated in uh, uh, in Georgia um, State, uh, and um, uh, he created this uh, um, uh, tender retaliation uh, uh, in which he made these uh, uh, tiny soldiers. Remember the Toy Story, uh, the, the green soldiers, right? And so he made a sort of a feminine version of that. Uh, all these tiny soldiers wear skirts, but they also hold uh, on one hand a weapon, and the other hand a purse. And so her idea is that I can be tough, but I can be feminine. It doesn't matter. I can I can be both. Uh, and uh, in the installation, she actually includes a, a rifle, uh, and the rifle is actually very light. It's made of uh, 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 the material that. Uh, Probably not very popular in this country, but in uh, in Asia, uh, it's a face mask uh, that women use every night. Uh, supposedly, that breach your face, you look more white uh, than yellow. You know, the idea of yellow and white is is an ethnic uh, uh, division that the West imagined uh, about the white and, and, and other other uh, ethnic group on Earth. And so uh, it's very popular uh, in Asia to use this 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 mask, uh, and because she had a rather dark complexion uh, naturally, and so a lot of her friends told her that she she used this thing every night, uh, so she would look more beautiful. And so in the end, she actually used the uh, uh, the mask uh, uh, to make her art. Uh, uh, she used a special kind of glue. Uh, to uh, manipulate the mask, uh, and so uh, they hardened uh, to become like a lot of different things. And one of the things that she did was to make them uh, into rifles, um, uh, and uh, it's hung uh, suspended from the ceiling uh, that you can actually uh, uh, use uh, in the uh, installation. Now. The younger generation of artists are, are oftentimes uh, uh, influenced by a uh, uh, Disney cartoon uh, or uh, memories of the childhood, uh, their childhood, uh, and so uh, this kind of uh, youth popular culture resurfaces in uh, a lot of the artists' uh, artwork, and that's a new phenomenon uh, in Taiwan uh, today. Uh, and some are very private, uh, some are more uh, more uh, public, uh, and some uh, have have used uh, images like Disney uh, cartoon figures, uh, and some use uh, more uh, personal uh, images. Uh, this one by uh, Zhang Wenzi, she uh, uses the uh, this is actually embroidery. Uh, she has uh, she sewed them on, uh, and uh, you can see on one hand it's a it's a Disney. Uh, 
uh, cartoon figure. But then she wants to explore the, the idea of desire uh, behind these, uh, these uh, uh, movies or stories. That's always uh, uh, PG or PG-13. But in the end, when the prince and, uh, uh, and the princess got together, what did they do? There's a desire there, right? Uh, behind the scene, uh, she wants to explore that. Uh, and sort of uh, finish the story untold uh, in her artwork. And so you can see this overlaying uh, of that uh, uh, perfect image uh, and the image of desire uh, in the background. Uh, and she had done uh, uh, a series uh, of uh, these images uh, in Taiwan. And uh, a young artist, uh, Zhang Jiaying, uh, who uh, almost represented a, a group of uh, uh, the younger generation of Taiwanese artists who uh, grew up with uh, stuffed animals. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't have stuffed animals, so I, I don't understand this. But my children have probably 30, 40, 100, I don't know, on their beds. And so they grew up with this. Um, so this is a new culture uh, of, uh, of uh, younger Taiwanese. And Zhang Jiayin, uh, would, uh, when she was young, and I think a lot of uh, kids in the United States too, uh, would begin to imagine a story among these characters. Uh, particularly in the intimate space of their own rooms, when the parents are not there, uh, the story just go wild, the imagination go wild. And so for Zhang Jiayin, uh, this is sort of the beginning of her art. He began to uh, uh, pen these figures, these uh, stuffed animals that he ha she had uh, in her childhood uh, and start to make stories uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in these uh, uh, paintings. Now, the story is a private. Uh, sometimes she, she would tell you uh, what she meant. Uh, oftentimes it's about uh, her relationship with her boyfriend. Uh, uh, but she also believes that a painting, once it's created, it's open to uh, interpretation. So the audience can almost make up their own stories by reading uh, these figures, their relationship, and create their own stories. So it's sort of an ongoing, uh, uh, ongoing uh, event uh, and can have uh, many different results. Um, and so that's a way of uh, uh, showing uh, how she create her art uh, through uh, her childhood memory. And this memory, of course, is different uh, in every person uh, and can be uh, uh, manipulated. Now, the last person uh, I want to introduce today is Ye Yi Li, uh, who uh, uh, is a young uh, woman uh, artist whose idea of art is uh, Kuso. Uh, do you know what Kuso is? Kuso is a, a Japanese term uh, um, it's in uh, Japanese popular culture, uh, which means uh, uh, you take something silly of nonsense very seriously. So basically you do something, some act that basically is meaningless, but you take it very seriously and, and go about doing it. And so this artist will oftentimes make a kind of costume uh, and wear that on the street. And so when you look at this person on the street, you, you basically want to stay away from it. Her. But she will go around, so he, she decides today I'm going to kiss 100 people. So she will be in this costume, she will go around and say, Can I kiss you? Okay, and she will do this, and then people will die. So this, this is the Kuso art that she does. And in this one, uh, she made this uh, bunny uh, costume, uh, and she uh, went to Paris, uh, went to uh, France, she went to uh, Monet's garden. She actually danced through the garden with this. Uh, and then I uh, uh, went back to the studio, uh, used digital technology uh, to create some, some special magical effects of her action and become her art. And I cannot say this has deep meaning because there's no deep meaning in, in, the, in the art. It's not like artists of my generation who is deeply care about the society, of, uh, about politics, uh, and got involved in this. I think the younger generation you know, of these artists that we see uh, in the last few minutes, they, they're really personal and they, they're very light. Uh, their art is very light. Uh, it's, it's not uh, about the society anymore. It's almost 
meaningless in a way that it's fun that you do it and then you sort of leave it behind uh, and you don't have to think about it that hard. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.